Thank you for the introduction. I'm Gautam. I'm a graduate student at uh, Michigan State. I'm with uh, ECE and uh, CMSC. CMSC is a fairly new department there, which stands for Computational Mathematics Science and Engineering. It's a high-performance scientific computing and data-oriented department. Um, so my talk today is on uh, Sarkis, uh, the code I developed for uh, molecular dynamics for certain kinds of systems, which I will be explaining about them later. Uh, and it's entirely in Python, and it's fast. Uh, I'll tell you how. I would like to thank my uh, collaborators, Youngjun Choi, who is in the audience today, and uh, my advisor and mentor, Michael S. Murillo, uh, who is a full professor in CMSC. And then I would like to thank the uh, funding agency, uh, AFOSR, Air Force Office of Scientific Research, without which none of this would have been possible. And then uh, for those who do not know what molecular dynamics means, uh, it's one of the popular methods for solving a many-body correlated system. And then it was uh, first used, as far as I know, uh, to simulate a 1D chain of particles with nonlinear interactions. Uh, it was famously known as the F-PUT problem, which stands for Fermi's Pasta, Ulum, and Singo. And this was reported in a Los Alamos National Lab report in 1955. And uh, so what, what, are the, what are the equations that molecular dynamics basically solves? It's, so if the most popular form is the uh, n-body Hamiltonian dynamics. And uh, uh, if you have n particles described with a Hamiltonian, uh, where the particles are interacting through some kind of an interaction U, uh, then, and if it's pairwise interaction, then uh, the uh, particle positions R and their momenta P evolve with these two uh, sets of equations. And uh, as you can see, for a pairwise interaction, there is a sum over i and j term there, which, if computed naively, would scale uh, in a quadratic manner. So it's an n squared problem with naive scaling. And since it's dynamics, it has to be uh, simulated over a long time. So these calculations have to be done uh, several times, say a million times. Therefore, each step needs to be really fast. Uh, but there are uh, some really uh, amazing MD codes that already exist for uh, large-scale simulations. Uh, some of the famous ones are uh, LAMPS, uh, which is for simulating solid-state material, soft matter, or coarse grain dynamics. There is GROMAX and NAMD for uh, biomolecular systems. Then the question is, so why, why take the effort of developing circus? Uh, well, to be honest, it started as a fun project uh, tied to my actual, uh, one of my actual research projects in my program. Uh, so to begin, I need to give an overview of my research area, which is uh, strongly coupled plasma physics. Um, so plasmas are charged particle systems. Uh, that are constantly in motion and they're constantly interacting. And then uh, if the average charge in the system, say, is Q, and if the average separation between the particles is A, and if the temperature of the system is in units of energy denoted by T, then that ratio gamma is referred to as the Coulomb coupling parameter. If that's greater than one, then the plasma is characterized to be strongly coupled. And uh, as far as I know, the, uh, the only a reliable way of accurately capturing strongly coupled plasma dynamics is using um, MD. Uh, and uh, so these, these kinds of strongly coupled plasmas manifest themselves in uh, different systems. Um, there is this uh, one category of hot and dense plasmas, such as uh, that found in inertial confinement fusion process at uh, the National Ignition Facility, which is in Lawrence Livermore or the warm dense matter experiments at the, using the Linac coherent light source, um, or the Z experiment at Sandia, and the, uh, I should say, the more exotic strongly coupled plasmas are found in the interior of uh, planetary cores. And then there is this other extreme, which is the extremely cold and extremely dilute, which are the ultra cold plasmas. Uh, and there are two kinds, neutral and the non-neutral category. The neutral category being created from ultra-cold gases, which can be um, about microkelvin or nanokelvin in temperature. And then the non-neutral category is nothing but ions trapped in uh, traps like Paul or Penning trap. 
So um, as I said, MD is uh, one uh, a reliable tool. Or I, I mean, as far as I know, it's one of the best tools for simulating uh, strongly coupled plasmas. And uh, for computational purposes, most of these systems can be uh, simulated just with a single form of an interaction, which is the screened Coulomb interaction, also known as the Yukawa interaction. And it's nothing but the Coulomb term uh, multiplied into this exponential factor, and uh, which has this quantity called the screening length, lambda s, which is a function of the electron and ion densities and temperatures. And uh, as you can see, as the screening length varies, that is, if the screening length is extremely large, then this term uh, goes to 1, recovering the Coulomb interaction. Uh, and if the screening length is small, then uh, we get a short range interaction. But there is intermediate uh, values for the screening length when the interaction becomes medium range. So depending on um, the stage of the evolution, uh, the screening length, uh, the range of interaction uh, spans from short to medium to long range, and this is uh, very well, this has been studied uh, well in, say, for uh, ev evolution of the ultra cold plasmas or the different stages of ICF experiments. So, um, so what are the initial objectives that actually led to uh, developing Circus? So, as I said, mainly it was a fun project, but we wanted to add some objectives to make it serious. And then it was, so uh, if it went well, then this would turn out to be an open source MD code uh, in a language that is uh, you know, easy to code uh, and uh, with primarily focused on strongly coupled plasmas and must be able to choose the optimal algorithm depending on the uh, range of the forces. And it was mainly aimed for laptop and or desktop use for experimenters to make it part of their workflow. Uh, or for beginners in computational research in strongly coupled plasmas. And uh, finally, uh, which is really important, I think, the code must be easy to modify so it can grow. And uh, I mentioned about uh, uh, you know, choosing an optimal force calculation algorithm. Um, so it's known that for long-range Coulomb, uh, we have one of the best methods which is the particle, particle, particle mesh method, which is an order n log n method. Uh, n log n mainly comes from um, using some Fourier transform since the calculation involves, uh, part of the calculation involves Fourier space. Uh, and for short range interactions, uh, we have the popular link cell list method, which is an order n method. So uh, the, the research project that I mentioned about started with this question. Uh, what is the optimal force calculation algorithm, especially when the interaction is medium range? Uh, and that was, uh, that project was in collaboration with Lawrence Livermore. And um, so, I mean, I'll show you later that we did answer that question. Um, but then before that, I think the most interesting part of this project uh, was this question, wouldn't a pure Python MD code be very slow? Um, well, uh, maybe not with the proper use of NumPy arrays and uh, number. So what is number? Some of you might have attended a tutorial on number. Uh, it's nothing but uh, a just-in-time compiler which compiles Python slow parts of the code so they can give performance similar to C or Fortran. And, uh, What's amazing about number is it does this in a very surgical manner. So you can just choose, choose parts of your code or parts of the functions of the code that need to be uh, you know, as fast as C or Fortran, and we just add a declarator statement on top. So it's very easy to use. And uh, so I think some of you might find this interesting. I found this very interesting, which was the performance comparison between uh, the Sarkers and C versions. Um, so I just showed the results for two uh, intense parts of the code, one being the link cell list, which I said is an order and scaling algorithm. And then, um, so here I have the timing, the time per time step in the y-axis and the particle number in the x-axis. It's a log-log plot. And so for particle numbers ranging from 10,000 to a million, I have three curves here. The red curve, the solid one, is just C. Uh, the dashed red is C with O3 optimization. 
uh, and then uh, the blue is the circus version. And as you can see here, circus is doing slightly better than optimized C for the link cell list part. And then, um, so the other computationally intense part of the code is uh, assigning charges to a grid, which also scales linearly. And then uh, similar log log, time per time step, and y and particle number on the x. And you see the same color codes for three different times. And here we see that uh, circus and optimized C are similar in performance. And I didn't do any magic to get this. I just use NumPy arrays wherever I can. So in this case, it was particle positions, velocities, accelerations, charges, and masses. That's, that, those are all the quantities that are needed for at least this, the, the kind of MD that I'm interested in. Um, and then, um, so this is just a snapshot of the starting part of the, the link cell list uh, routine. And as you can see, it's just simple Python code with just one decorator statement on top, which is from number. That says auto-jit, which is the older version of number. You don't have auto-jit anymore, I think. It's just jit. And then, uh, so let's go over the current capabilities in the code. Uh, the first capability is it simulates a homogeneous system for range of coupling and screening lengths. Um, by homogeneous system, I mean that you don't have, uh, you know, crazy discontinuities in densities. And then, um, so this in the community is referred to as a zero D system. Uh, actually, the system resides in three dimensions, but uh, I think conceptually it is treated as zero D because of lack of discontinuities in density. And then um, the observables that the code gives out uh, are the static structural properties, mainly through the radial distribution function, uh, and the st uh, structural and temporal properties combined in one quantity, which is called the dynamic structure factor. Um, and then uh, through that, we can get the dispersion relation as well. Uh, finally, with uh, a, in a project that's in collaboration with Young Jun, um, we are trying to compute a quantity called the dynamic local field corrections, uh, which is a very rich quantity, which uh, has been shown theoretically to uh, have the best opinion of all transport properties of interest for any strongly coupled plasma. So I think that would be a very interesting result that we are looking forward to. And then uh, the next aspect that the code can compute uh, is a bump on tail instability which is a highly non-equilibrium dynamics. Uh, I'll, uh, hopefully I can show the movie later. And finally, uh, the code can simulate explicit electrons as well in addition to the ions. So, uh, I mean, realistic plasmas have ions and electrons in them. Uh, but then usually it's very difficult to treat electrons due to their quantum nature, but uh, the code uses quantum statistical potentials for that. And then, um, so why need explicit electrons? A lot of interesting non-equilibrium dynamics involving electrons requires that uh, capability, one such being studying the temperature relaxation between electrons and ions. And the other interesting quantity that I think many people in the national labs are looking at is like charged particle stopping power, which is crucial to uh, experiments like uh, NIF. And then uh, I'd like to give a preview of the code usage. It's very simple to use the code as it is right now. The first step is just to modify the input file, which is in uh, JSON format. And I have snapshots of uh, two different input files for the different cases. Uh, so we have quantities like, uh, you know, you can, you have control over all the parameters that can be changed. For example, number of particles, time step, the uh, length of the run, which is divided into the equilibration phase and the thermostatic phase. Oh, sorry, they are the same, or the post-equilibration phase. And then uh, you can also adjust the, uh, the volume in terms of its aspect ratio. And once the input file is modified, uh, you just import the code, and then you uh, invoke which feature you wanted to simulate, be it a bump on tail, which I've written in short for BOT, or the 0D version. Uh, I'm doing some uh, code restructuring to add the uh, electron version too. Then um, that's to be expected soon. So in this manner, uh, I think it's easy to use the code from a command line or uh, in a Jupyter notebook. 
So just to give an idea of the uh, dynamics simulated by the code for uh, different coupling strengths. So that's a simulation of uh, the dynamics generated for a gamma of 10. And the particles are color coded with their kinetic energy. Which oh, one minute, sorry. Right, let me quickly show a simulation with the bump on tail and stability. Uh, so the particles in red are in the bulk of the distribution or the Maxwellian distribution. And the particles in the blue constitute the, sorry, I don't know. The particles in the blue constitute the bump, and as you can see, a wave is set up by this instability. And this is a simulation with uh, 10,000 particles. And then this, that system can be visualized better uh, in phase space. Uh, here, y is the uh, x component of the velocities, and uh, x is the x, the x component of the positions. As you can see, vortex dynamics was set up due to the energy exchange between the particles. So I think I need to rush through now. Let me quickly go to the end. So the code will be released soon as an open source code. We are planning on uh, doing a release through a journal. So I really thank the conference organizers and the uh, reviewers for uh, giving me this chance, though the code is not open source yet. I really appreciate that. Uh, and I'm currently working on adding some features like making the code, uh, you know, have arbitrarily many number of species and uh, temperatures to, and to make it more user friendly. So for updates and more details on the code, that is the link. Uh, future work with GPUs is planned. So uh, Michael, my advisor is on the left and Young Jun on the right. So thank you again. Thank you for your attention. Any questions?